Hey, I'm Ryan, this is Ask the Pastor. Andy Rassman asks, so what convinced you to baptize babies? Uh, he, he later goes on to say, I was surprised to see you ordained in a denomination that baptizes babies. Uh, Andy is a friend of mine, to give you some context, from Concordia University. Uh, Concordia is a Missouri Synod Lutheran school that I attended undergrad and uh, really cut my teeth on having theological debates with people while I was at Concordia. Now, Andy, for clarification, I think you probably are misremembering what my position was back in those days, because it hasn't changed as much as you might think it has. Um, it is true that now I'm uh, ordained in the Presbyterian Church USA, and it's true that we do baptize infants as well as adults. Uh, but back in the day, I wasn't hardcore against baptizing infants the way I think some churches are, or, or some Christians who are from more evangelical or non-denominational traditions, like I was. I, I was a kind of obnoxious non-denom guy, and my position was it really doesn't matter uh, that either... Okay, I will give you this. You were obnoxious. <laughs> Just joking. Uh, uh, I'm not too joking. I'm sure I'm obnoxious too. But yeah, you you, were, you could be obnoxious at times. Um, I think ah, okay, maybe I'm misremembering your position a little bit, but I do recall an instance where in the cafeteria at the school, um, I sit down and immediately you engage me with asking the question, "Why do you baptize babies?" And I start laying out scripture verses, and every time I gave a verse, you gave, like, an argument to it um, in which whatever I was saying would have been wrong. So it probably it's that conversation that I really walk away remembering that um, you were against infant baptism. Maybe you were just playing devil's advocate. Maybe you were still just trying to work through and figure out, like, why are these Lutherans at this Concordia Irvine school baptizing babies and into it? Um, that it, probably what you're saying is absolute. I'm sure it's right. It is your position, um, not mine. Um, so I'm sure you're right that you were more ambivalent. Um, it's just that one conversation made me think you were against it. But then to actually take that step to now baptize babies when you were ambivalent, yeah, I'd like to hear what it was that pushed you into that. So let's keep going. We're going to dedicate a infant and then baptize a believer, or we're going to baptize an infant and then confirm a believer. And what real difference does it make? Why are we arguing about this was uh, my real concern. Yeah, what you just pointed out is actually something that I do not like about um, our Lutheran rituals or traditions right now. I don't think that I can recall anywhere in our confessions anything about the need for what we call confirmation that you were just referring to. I don't like this idea of have confirmation so that when a child that was baptized gets to a certain age can now uh, confirm that they actually had faith um, in their baptism. Uh, it makes no sense whatsoever, especially when that child, probably when they were two or three years old, was already confessing faith in Christ. It should just simply be like an instructional period where, hey, you're at an age now where we think you can go through and discuss and understand the doctrines and confessions of the church uh, more deeply and thoroughly. And we think it's important for you to know them, not just to speak them, but to be able to understand them and defend them. So yeah, I'm there. I, I think this whole confirmation thing is messing up people's understanding of why we're baptizing babies. It, it just really throws a wrench into it. Um, not to mention a lot of kids, once they get through confirmation, quit going to church anymore because they got so tired at confirmation because it's it's viewed as like this, it's a step we added. Okay, once you go through these classes and then do this confirmation ritual, now you can take communion? What? Ah, it's difficult. It's something I'm going to have to deal with and work through um, when and if I get ordained in the LCMS. And I was bumping up with a lot of LCMS guys that uh, felt like, oh no, if you're not baptizing infants, you're really 
really off base. Um, and I think what moved me more than anything else in the direction of the PCUSA and a denomination that does baptize infants is this reality of grace. Um, we hold to one uh, truth, one faith, one baptism. And so if I'm going to recognize that other people who were baptized as infants, that their baptism is legitimate, and I'm going to have a kind of ecumenical relationship, church to church with them, and say, that's that's a real baptism. That's a baptism in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, and I, I believe and I affirm that baptism. And I, I think that's a really important place to be, because if you're not in that place, then you, you get into kind of a sketchy place that's like, well, my baptism is better than your baptism, and that's like... The New Testament just says absolutely no to all of that. And so if I'm going to say yes to, uh, to infant baptisms that happen, then when a parent comes to me and says, I want you to baptize my child, um, I have to know that that's a thing that could happen. Um, that yes, I, I, can, I can baptize a child and that can be a legitimate baptism. And I don't... Okay, uh, that's cool, Ryan. I like that explanation a little bit there. Um, that is actually one of the things that kind of really got me to have to make a firm decision. Um, infant baptism or baptizing babies, is that okay? Um, I obviously was baptized. Well, maybe not obviously to people. Um, I was baptized as an infant. And um, there was a point around 18, 19 years old where uh, a, I guess it was a non anom church. Uh, started to hound me and come to my door relentlessly because they found out I was baptized as a baby and they said because I was baptized as a baby um, I was not saved because I was openly denying the first thing that Jesus said about being one of his disciples which was being baptized and um, it got me thinking like okay well if I get baptized again then I should be spending the rest of my entire life trying to convince everyone that was baptized as a baby that they must be baptized. Um, and I was sitting like, that that seems absurd. And such a thing would be a taking away of grace. It would be destroying grace. It would be like the new circumcision that is now required to be saved. Uh, you must do this in order to be a Christian. And that's just not in Scripture whatsoever. And I think it was interesting how you said if you got to that position where I don't need to um, make sure everyone that was baptized as a baby now gets baptized again because their first baptism as an infant wasn't valid, then there really is no grounds necessarily to deny someone that does bring their baby to you to be baptized. That's interesting, and I, I think you're going to get into more than just that. That's an interesting starting point. I have to withhold that grace from the child for 7, 10 12 years, whatever you think, you know, an age of accountability is when an age of accountability is not a biblical question. Now, there are um, some things I really love about infant baptism. Uh, one of them is this, this understanding of grace, uh, that the, the salvation that comes from God isn't something that we earn. It's something that's, that's imputed to us. It's something that happens when we are helpless and vulnerable. Um, and so it, baptism of infants becomes a really great image of that. Whereas baptism of adults, and especially uh, demanding baptism of adults, saying this, this is required, this is the only way you can do it, uh, becomes an image of something else, uh, becomes an image of really you have to believe and particularly, you have to believe in a kind of way that makes belief into a work. I don't strictly... Uh, yes. Faith then becomes a work. In addition to that, groups that demand um, baptism done in a certain way, they usually have a mode of baptism that must be performed a certain way as well in order for that baptism to be a legitimate baptism. And so there's more than just even the confession of faith that oftentimes goes along with this. And this is stuff just not seen in Scripture. They're adding things uh, to the baptismal act, uh, which is not in Scripture, and then mandating it as a requirement, which is completely destroying grace, as you were indicating. So uh, I am in agreement there. I would just say maybe I don't love infant baptism because... It shows it's a good symbol or sign of how we're saved. I believe it's more a um, you are to baptize this way or you are not. And I just love the fact that God is a gracious God. Um, if we're 
infants or if we're 80 year old lifetime sinners that have hated his guts he still extends grace to us we believe that belief is a work but when belief is defined as like believe and proclaim and do the thing and be a part of the church and find a good bible believe in church that you could like that that's things that's that's works by the time you're doing all that um and that's right. not the image right and they don't seem to get that that's works that is the most difficult thing when you have this discussion of people that demand that you must be able to do x y and z before you're baptized um, because they do not get how it is destroying grace of how christ saves um that's the image of us choosing to get saved and and us getting saved by christ and it makes christ the indirect object and it's just not as good a picture i will also say that i think the the biblical justification for infant baptism is strong. Uh, Colossians talks about baptism and circumcision and the circumcision of the heart, the way they, they match. And of course, circumcision happens before any kind of decision is made for the child. Um, and the counter arguments, the arguments for like baptism. Well, that, um, that Colossians passage also speaks about baptism being a circumcision done by Christ of believers are are not strong it's based on like readings of matthew where it says oh he says he went into the water jesus went into the water so it's got to be dunking but like well yeah it was a river so you gotta you gotta walk out into the water and then you can sprinkle or dunk or whatever you're gonna do it's it, but you're in the water that's that's how rivers work that's not like a theological well and then you got to come up out of the river, right? You got to climb back up out of the bank. So when the Holy Spirit descended and the heavens opened and God the Father spoke, saying, this is my son, was that when he was coming up out of the water after being immersed? Or was it him coming up out of the water when he's going climbing up the river bank? Anyway, I, I, and I should mention families are baptized. Uh, families are baptized in the New Testament. People, uh, men come to faith and then their whole families repent and believe and are baptized. And so that's definitely a weaker argument for infant baptism, but it is still part of it. Uh, so I, I, I just don't see any reason to be on this like opposite end of like, don't you dare baptize an infant. Um, but I, I still don't see a lot of reason to be this, like, you must baptize infants, and if you don't, then you, like, don't get it. Like, that, uh, one of the things that I love. Well, I would say people that are highly against infant baptism typically don't get saved by grace through faith. Belief usually is their work. They don't get that faith is given to us, that we are made alive in Christ while we were dead in our sins and trespasses that no one can say jesus is lord except by the holy spirit that we are born again spiritually as children of god and that it's not something we can choose to intellectually do um it's not something we do just as our physical birth is not in our capabilities to say yes or no to so they are missing that i would say that i think the presbyterian church lacks and that we need to do more of is believers' baptisms. Um, a, a living church, a, a successful church, a growing church, is one that baptizes more people than they bury. And the way to accomplish that is not, it's not, it's not to have a lot of babies. The way to accomplish that is to evangelize and get people who aren't currently following Jesus to currently follow Jesus and commit with their lives and come to faith, join the church, and to be baptized. There is something incredibly beautiful about uh, an adult coming to faith and submitting to that same symbol, that, that a symbol of grace washing over us, something that is beyond us coming to us uh, like a believer's baptism. So I. Okay, so um, I would point out here, I, I, I agree with what you're saying. Um, we need to evangelize. We need to, we would pray and hope to see converts knowing our theology, both Presbyterian and Lutheran, um, as much as you throw out the seeds of the gospel to people and as well as you do it, 
um, lovingly or with great arguments and whatever, um, you in no way can guarantee you're going to have growth. God is the one that brings the growth. But I think as long as we are watering and planting seeds and watering and doing the things Christ has commanded us, hopefully you would be seeing conversions um, of from people that are older um, and able to have cognitive answers when they are immediate when they're converted by the spirit um so in that sense yes we should be seeing more adults be baptized in the lcms in the pcusa and um i think i would just avoid the language of saying believers baptism there i would just try to say we want to see more adults baptized and i would think we should probably also be saying uh, we need to baptize babies. Uh, maybe in this video I've used the term infant baptism, but I try to say, yes, I believe babies should be baptized. Yes, I believe you baptize adults too. Right? Because, And I, I like that language more than believer's baptism and infant baptism because there's only one baptism, which is what you alluded to with scripture earlier in this video, that there is one faith, one church, one baptism one remission of sins. And um, with that, I think our language of believer's baptism and infant baptism can create two baptisms. And I do think if you really look into it, the things that a lot of denominations that baptize babies say and do in terms of their rituals and rites, even maybe their teachings, potentially their confessions, is harmful because they're, they're typically not consistent when they baptize babies and when they baptize adults and thus it gives the picture of two baptisms when there is only one baptism and it's washing in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit and it is for the remission of sins. It is for the washing of sins. Um, I would not just say it's a symbol of grace. I would say there actually is grace given there that in baptism you're buried with Christ and raised with Christ. That baptism now saves you and um, it is a cutting off of the sinful nature as you alluded to. Um, if your citation, or not alluded to that, you cited with Colossians. Anyways, uh, that's kind of the feedback I would give on that bit of your answer. Um, and I think that is a critique also to um, my my kind of tribe, I guess you would say, um, the Lutheran Church, Missouri Senate, that I think we do end up creating two baptisms in our language. And there's only one. And so I would avoid just saying we need more believers' baptisms. I would just say we need more um, evangelism and we need to hope and pray for converts and i would love to have more adults baptized than babies in my church i think that's the language we need to be saying instead of we need more believers baptisms i love believers baptisms but i i also love and participate in infant baptisms see that that there's i think showing the two the dichotomy just that last little sentence you said do me a favor andy if you think this was a good answer will you will you share this of course, I know you don't agree totally, um, but if you think, hey, this, this is a good explanation of like how someone changes his opinion, uh, I'd love to see you put this on your page. On the other hand, if you don't think it's a good answer, uh, would you record something and tell me why it's not good and we can generate community in this whole COVID. All right, guys. Um, I think you kind of heard what I did like and what I didn't like about his answer. And um, yeah, we'll see, uh, see where this goes. I've rarely had too much success talking to people about why I baptize babies, but in the description below, you can see a link to Ryan's page, his channel. You can subscribe to him if you like what he's doing. He tackles difficult questions that most people wouldn't want to tackle, and even questions that a lot of people would automatically dismiss as being stupid, but Ryan is smart in recognizing that they are not stupid questions and that people genuinely ask them and that by people calling them stupid and just completely dismissing them, it actually hurts people and their relationship with Christ. So um, follow him if you want to see some crazy, interesting questions answered. Um, also, um, below, I will add videos I've made on baptism that would more unpack in full detail the positions I hold concerning baptizing infants, as well as just what is baptism. 
Uh, Ryan, thanks for answering my question I submitted. Thank you for posing the opportunity for people to submit questions to you, any question, and that you would answer them. Um, God bless you.